The U.S. drought began in the spring of 2012 and has continued to 2013, where 65% experienced moderate to exceptional drought conditions. The bottom left image shows that the drought is still affecting the nation of April 2013, mainly caused by low rainfall intensified by high temperatures. The Ethiopian drought lasted from March 2008 to April 2009, consequently having large impacts on the nation, such as famine. U.S. droughts are not as frequent as Ethiopian droughts, although some of the major ones, such as the Dust Bowl of the 1930s, the severe droughts of the 1950s, as well as the 1960s, were droughts that lasted for almost four to five years. In the Horn of Africa, the region in which Ethiopia is found, there has been an increase in, t- in frequency of droughts over the past 20 years. This area is much more prone to droughts due to the arid and semi-arid climates, and the Horn of Africa is expected to experience droughts at least once or twice per year. The U.S. 2012 drought is the largest in over 50 years and makes one of the top 10 largest droughts of the century, showing that although droughts in the U.S. do not occur as frequently as in eastern Africa, each occurrence of drought causes severe consequences on the areas as exposed to Ethiopian droughts, where although there are more droughts, the magnitude of past droughts have a large rate. In many parts of Ethiopia, the precipitation rate during the rainy season fell under 30% of the average in 1995 to 2010, affecting mainly agricultural production that triggered much larger consequences. Generally, the speed of onset of droughts is very slow in comparison to other hazards such as earthquakes or hurricanes. This can be said for these two case studies where it is hard to determine a specific point in time that the drought started as the effects of droughts can take a long time to Wealth is an important aspect in assessing vulnerability because of its direct effect on access to resources. The U.S. is one of the top countries in the world in terms of economy. 15.1% of the population live below the poverty line. In Ethiopia, 29.2% of the total population live below the poverty line. There are less job varieties with agriculture accounting for 85% of all jobs. By comparing the wealth between the U.S. and Ethiopia, it is known that the U.S. is less vulnerable to drought because the people in America have enough money to purchase the resources they need to withstand the drought. The literacy rate for the U.S. is 99%, while in Ethiopia it is 47.2%, showing that most Americans can read and write, which is less than half of Ethiopians. By comparing education between the U.S. and Ethiopia, it is clear that the U.S. is less vulnerable to drought because they receive higher education, which gives them better paid jobs, and in the long run, gives them higher income, which they can spend in purchasing resources to withstand the drought. The U.S. spends 17.9% of the total GDP on health facilities. In contrast, Ethiopia has much lower health expenditure, which is 4.9% of their total GDP. By By comparing health between the U.S. and Ethiopia, It is understandable that the U.S. once again is less vulnerable because they have better health facilities which can give them quicker and better medical treatment resulting in less casualties during the drought. The demographics of the U.S. and Ethiopia are differentiated in many ways and could affect their vulnerability to hazards. The United States is the third most populous country in the world, thus the demographics create pressure to the environment and food production. The U.S. is very urbanized, with 82% residing in cities and suburbs as of 2008, when the worldwide urban rate is only 50.5%. Most people live near the coastline, which is why the effects were not as severe. However, the more populous states experience severe effects due to the aerial extent of the drought. Nonetheless, the very balanced stationary population structure of the USA allowed them to recover and provide domestic aid to many people. This suggests that low dependency leads to low vulnerability. On the other hand, Ethiopia has a population of 80 million, less than half of the population of the USA. Even though we think that less populated countries are less dense and less vulnerable, the urban population of Ethiopia is only 17%. This means that the majority of the population reside in areas where the drought effects are more severe. Moreover, the average family size is 6 or 7. Droughts may greatly affect children and families with malnutrition, as some families are not able to provide enough food for all their children. This is also a great issue for such a youthful population. By looking at the population structure, we can safely conclude that the youthful population of Ethiopia was much more vulnerable to drought. Ethiopia is divided into nine states by the largest ethnicities, except for Dair Dawa and Addis Ababa. Of these, the largest are the Oromo, Amahara, and Tigray. 
The Aroma and Tigray groups descended from the Abyssinian Empire of the 20th century, which ruled Ethiopia. The Amhara led Ethiopia until 1991 and was considered the elite ethnic group. Until 1991, the Oromo were not equal to the Amhara and were not given equal opportunities to educate their children, enter politics, or manifest their culture. Therefore, they are less equipped to handle the effects or even understand hazards. The inequality fueled by ethnic tensions has led to increased vulnerability to hazards such as drought. The worsted areas of drought are found in the middle states of the USA. Unlike Ethiopia, ethnic discrimination is very scarce, so most people receive the same opportunities, such as access to education and politics. Furthermore, people receive help based on their need, not on their ethnicity. They are thus given an advantage over the people of Ethiopia who are not given equal opportunities. Although the drought of the United States is still ongoing, it has a very long way to go and has similar characteristics to the Dust Bowl of the 1950s. It is predicted that if the precipitation picks up, farmers will be able to cultivate crops like corn and soybeans using modern farming practices and should be able to recover next year. Ethiopia, being trapped in a deadly cycle of death and famine, has a rain-fed agriculture that is shockingly vulnerable due to the small range in precipitation levels where it is predicted that the country has no way of recovering from this drought before the next one hits, where even international aid has struggled to provide resources to the population.